Hi guys, I'm gonna go over problem number three on the stoichiometry review sheet. Um, it's a little bit different than the first problem that we went over, so I figured it would be a good one to visit. And then um, I'll probably do one more tutorial video and um, anybody with questions can ask them during our live chats, which will be scheduled throughout the week. All right, so problem number three says, which element is in excess when three grams of magnesium is ignited in 2.2 grams of pure oxygen, what mass is in excess and what mass of magnesium oxide is formed? Um, so there's a lot of things going on in this problem. First of all, you should all be really familiar with this reaction because we've all done this reaction already. Um, we lit magnesium on fire at least once. So you guys should be familiar with what happens there. So it says that we're reacting three grams of magnesium with 2.2 grams of pure oxygen. Um, well, the first thing we're going to need to do is write a balanced chemical reaction. So I have done that for us. Um, two magnesiums plus one oxygen forms two magnesium oxides. States of matter aren't really important here. Um, you know what the states of matter are for this reaction since you've all done it already. Um, and for you honor students, make sure you include all of the states of reactions or all the states of your um, of matter in your balanced chemical equations. All right, so the first thing that we're told is that we're starting with three grams of magnesium and uh, 2.2 grams of oxygen. Okay, so underneath each of those reactants, I listed the amount that we were starting with. Um, now it says what mass is in excess? All right, so in the previous problem, um, I said there were two ways to determine the limiting reactant, and we used one of those ways to solve that problem. We converted both of the given amounts of reactant to the same product to see which one produced less. The one that produces less is your limiting reactant. Now in this particular problem, we're going to take a different approach because we're not asked to find um, necessarily the mass of the product form. We are asked to find that, but not initially. So first we need to find out which one of these reactants is in excess and by how much. That means um, once the reaction is complete, how much of that reactant is going to be left over. One of them is going to get used up completely. That's your limiting reactant. The other one is going to be in excess, which means we're going to have some left over. So what we're going to do is pick one of these to start with. I'm just going to start with magnesium because it's listed first. There's no other reason. And you could always start with the oxygen. It would not matter. You would end up with the same answer no matter what. All right, so three grams of magnesium is what we're starting with. Now, make sure you have your periodic tables with you. If you don't, um, go ahead and get one. I have one on my phone, and that's what I'm going to be using. Um, but you should all have yours in your notebooks. All right, so um, we're going to start by converting three grams of magnesium using our road map into moles. Magnesium, in this case, is our substance A. So we're going to convert that into moles. Looking at your periodic table, one mole of magnesium is equal to 24.31 grams. Okay, that's just pulled right from the periodic table. So we're going to set that up like this. Grams of magnesium is going to go on the bottom here because that's what we started with initially. That's what we were given in our reaction. So we're going to get, put grams on the bottom to make uh, grams cancel out. One mole of magnesium is going to go on the top. Then we're going to convert that to the other reactant, which is oxygen. So looking at our balanced equation, the next step on the roadmap is mole ratio, going from moles of substance A to moles of substance B. So looking at our balanced equ equation, we have two moles of magnesium that we're going to put on the bottom of that next step because we want moles of magnesium to cancel out. We have one mole of oxygen in our balanced equation, so we're gonna put that on top. And then we are going to do one more step. We're gonna convert moles of oxygen into mass, or grams of oxygen. So one mole of O2 is gonna go on the bottom, and 32 grams is gonna go on the top. Oxygen is 16 grams per mole, so O2 is just 16 times two. So here's the setup. 
And now we are going to solve. We're going to take three grams of magnesium um, and multiply that by anything on the top of our stoichiometry work here. So the ones we're going to kind of ignore because they don't change our answer and it's just a waste of time. So 3 times 32 divided by 24.31 divided by 2 gives us 1.97 grams of oxygen. So what this is saying is if we use all of the magnesium that we have available, we will only need 1.97 grams of oxygen. Do we have 1.97 grams of oxygen? That's the next thing you want to ask yourself. Um, and the amount of oxygen that we have is given right here. It's listed in the problem, but I also wrote it on my little whiteboard here. So we have 2.2 grams of oxygen. Um, we only are going to use up 1.97 grams of oxygen. So what that means is oxygen is our excess reactant and magnesium is our limiting reactant. So now we're ready to solve um, the first question that's asked in the problem. What mass is in excess? Well, if we use all of the magnesium, we are going to need 1.97 grams of oxygen. So that means that the 2.2 grams that we have available minus the 1.97 grams that we use up gives us our excess. So that would be 0.23 grams of oxygen in excess or leftover when we're all done here. Okay, and I got that by taking the given amount and subtracting the amount that is used up to give us the difference, what's left over, 0.23 grams of oxygen. So that's the first part of this problem. Now the other part of the problem asks us what mass of magnesium oxide is formed. Um, so in order to solve this part of the problem, you have to remember which is our limiting reactant here. Um, we already decided, based on the first part of the problem, that the magnesium was our limiting reactant. Remember we said there, were, there was going to be oxygen left over? So if there's anything left over, that means that reactant is in excess. So the magnesium, in this case, is our limiting reactant, and that's where we're going to start our calculation one more time. So we're going to start with 3 grams of magnesium, because magnesium, the limiting reactant, controls how much product is formed. Um, so if we know magnesium is the limiting reactant, we know that that's what's going to determine how much of our magnesium oxide forms in this reaction. Now it's asking us for a mass of magnesium oxide. So looking back to the roadmap, we're starting with a mass. Um, we're starting with mass of substance A, which is 3 grams of magnesium. We're asked to find mass of substance B, which is the mass of our product formed. So we're going all the way through the roadmap one more time. Um, so starting with 3 grams of magnesium, we're going to first convert that to moles. One mole of magnesium is going to go on the top because we want to get rid of grams, so that has to go on the bottom. And one mole of magnesium is 24.31 grams, and that is directly from your periodic tables. So this is what that's going to look like. Then our next step is going to be a mole ratio step. So looking at our balanced equation, we're going to place two moles of magnesium on the bottom because there are two moles of magnesium in our balanced equation. And two moles of magnesium oxide, our product, are going to go on top. Um, and that just comes from the coefficients of your balanced equation. That was the first thing we did. And then one more step, we're going to convert magnesium oxide into um, from moles to grams. So one mole of magnesium oxide is going to go on the bottom. And then we're going to calculate our molar mass. 24.31 is the mass of magnesium, plus 16, which is the mass of oxygen, gives us a molar mass of 40.31 grams. So here's our, here's our setup. Here's all our work. And then we're going to multiply everything across the top and then divide by anything on the bottom. So we're going to take 3 times 2 times 40.31. And we're going to divide that by 24.31. We're going to divide that by 2. So we are going to end up with 4.97 grams of our product. Okay, make sure you're labeling your answers. Um, 4.97 grams of magnesium oxide. Not only a unit, but also um, a substance. We want to have both.
okay? So that is how you would solve problem number three on the review sheet. Um, if you have any questions, please let me know. And um, otherwise, I will post one more video of one of these problems that's left on the review sheet.